So before we move on to talking about techniques that you could use to perform color management in your projects or in your everyday life, I want to explain what I meant in the last slide by these are the color modes or the gamuts of color that different color modes can reproduce. And this parabola in the background are all these possible colors um, that are linked to the visible light spectrum. If we look at the two illustrations here, you can see that these are illustrating all of the possible colors in the entire world. Um, when we think about wavelengths, um, there are different wavelengths that, that we use. We use radio waves, FM and AM, to transmit sound. We use the microwaves to cook stuff in our microwave. We use uh, x-rays, you know, um, if you have a broken leg, you need to see that, that it's broken. Um, UV light, we talk about a lot. In the printing industry, we can use UV light to cure things, um, but UV light is also how we get sunburn and suntan and things like that. Um, the visible light spectrum is the, the wavelengths um, between 400 and 700 nanometers, and those wavelengths are visible to us, and they create the color that we see in the world. And we represent that by this diagram here that shows all the different colors that you might be able to see in the world. And in theory, we would want to recreate all of those colors, but we can't always do that because we don't have a, a way to output them. So now let's move on to Color Management 101. So again, I want to reiterate that I'm not expecting you to do all of these things. I just want you right now to understand that color management exists, it's important, and, it, and you should know why it's important, right? You should know that it's important because we want to have consistency between what we see on our screen and what we finally output, however we do that. So when calibrating a device, there are certain best practices to follow which depend on the device itself, for example. When calibrating a commercial printing press, test sheets are used to gauge the density of ink being applied and adjustments are made until the test print matches or measures the standard required for that particular printing process. And so what we would do in commercial printing is we would take the printing press that we're using, we would literally print this sheet, and then we would measure it. And we measure it using densitometers and spectrophotometers that allow us to measure the density of the ink being applied and the wavelength of color it's producing. And if it's supposed to be a 70% yellow dot, printing dot, because we print with dots called halftones, but we're seeing 40%, we can make adjustments to the printing press until the printing press is outputting the exact measure that it's supposed to. Now that's a really kind of broad um, description of what happens because it's much more complicated than that. You can also calibrate your screens. And so if we calibrate, calibrate all of our printers, but we do nothing to our screens, it's not going to help us with color management. We would have to, to calibrate the screen so we're seeing accurate color and it's showing us what we should expect when we print. And then we can calibrate the printer to make sure that the printer is outputting what it's supposed to. So when calibrating a display device like a computer monitor, an external light measure tool, like a monkey, which is just a name brand, you can Google it if you'd like to learn more about it, is used to measure and adjust the white or the brightness the black darkest point, and the gamma, which is the neutral gray settings. These settings can be set to your calibration needs. For example, commercial printers like to use 5000 Kelvin for standard white light, while commercial photographers prefer 6500 Kelvin. Again, I don't want you to calibrate your device for our class. We're just learning kind of skills-based Photoshop right now. But if you ever get into color critical work, you want to make sure that whatever color you're seeing is the color that you're going to output. And it doesn't matter what you do to the output. If your screen's not showing you accurate color, there's no way that you can ever ensure that there's consistency between what you see on the screen and what you're going to output.